everyone! This video is going to be all about art supplies that I would recommend you have in your studio or art supplies collection at all times. These are some of the most helpful items that will come in really handy when you're creating artwork. Some of these you might already have and some of them you might not have ever even heard of or thought about before. So without further ado, let's get straight into the materials. Now this first item is most likely something you already have, but this is just going to be a stress point and also a specific recommendation. And that is having a good pencil sharpener. Now this specific one, which is by far the best pencil sharpener that I have ever found, and I'm sure if you've been watching my videos for a while, you're probably sick of hearing me ramble on about this, but it is the Mitsubishi KH20 pencil sharpener. It is a hand crank one, it has two um, lead pointness options, but it is by far the best one I have ever used. It sharpens my Prismacolor pencils and Polychromos pencils beautifully. I will never use another pencil sharpener after using this one. That is how good it is. Now, as I said, I love using the sharpener to sharpen all of my colored pencils, but personally, I love to sharpen my sketching and drawing pencils with a knife. Now, this might not be for everybody, but I just find that using a knife to sharpen, you know, HB pencils, normal lead pencils, whatever you like to sketch with, um, a knife is the greatest method. You can control exactly how sharp you want the point to be, and yeah, it is, you can get a sharpness with a knife that you will never get with a pencil sharpener, and for sketching, that is definitely what I want. Like I mentioned, not for everyone, but I just wanted to throw that in here. I have been recently using um, one of these types of knives. This one is a crazy sharp blade, but in the past, I've also just used um, blades that I had worn down from cutting out super intricate um, paper light boxes and stuff that I um, had worn down the point of the blade so much I couldn't use it for that anymore, but the rest of the blade was fine. So that's kind of how I was recycling them by sharpening um, my pencils with them. So yes, that is the first thing. Make sure you have a good way to sharpen your pencils that you're happy with. The next thing kind of along the lines of, you probably already have it, but I'm going to recommend two specific ones, is make sure you have a good eraser. The two that I would highly recommend as being the most standout um, erasers in my personal workflow would be the Tombow Mono Zero um, pencil eraser. It's like a retractable one. It's kind of in a pen form and the Moo PVC eraser. Now, these are just the ones that I found work the absolute best for me, so that is why I'm specifically recommending these ones, but make sure you have a good eraser. I would almost say a good eraser is better than any type of pencil you use. You know, you could use the cheapest HB pencil going, but if you do not have a good way to erase that or refine that sketch, then it's not going to go well. This one I really love because it is so small. They do make another one that is more of um, a flat kind of chisel end and not so much a tiny little 2.3 millimeter round one. And this Moo PVC I love because not only does it erase basically anything um, without leaving any kind of trace on the paper, it is also one that clumps up a lot. So instead of having a million little um, eraser shavings all over your desk, you have bigger clumps that are much easier to get rid of. And I just find in general it makes way less mess. So yes, those are my two recommendations for erasers, but please make sure you have good erasers in your art supplies. The next extremely basic thing that you really should have in your art supplies collection are drawing clips. Now you could use any kind of binder clip or whatever, I just like using these drawing clips because I have them in a bunch of different sizes and I find that they don't um, indent the paper or anything, but I can guarantee at some point you will realize that you could use these. Um, whether it is holding down a sketch that you want to transfer on something, or I really like using these for holding down edges in watercolor sketchbooks instead of taping down the edges to stop the page from warping. They are just extremely useful and versatile items that will always come in handy no matter what kind of artwork you're making. 
Also along the tool vein of things is the smudge guard. Now this would be extremely helpful for people that are into digital art as well as traditional art. I use this kind of equally both ways. Now this one is the specific smudge guard brand but there are a whole bunch of different companies now that make these types of gloves. But this one is the two finger one, um, but basically not only can you use this on like your iPad if you're sketching and it will help you glide across um, the screen, um, whether you're using an iPad, Cintiq, whatever. I like basically can't draw on a Cintiq or iPad anymore without wearing this. That is how much this has changed how I work. It's extremely helpful, especially on an iPad or a Cintiq that has a touch screen because the screen will not pick up your handprint when you're using this. So if you're fine that you're having issues with the screen um, recognizing the side of your hand as a touch point, then this will definitely stop you um, from having that problem. Other than it just helps you glide across the screen and create so much smoother lines. The other thing I love using this for is traditional artwork. If you have an extremely detailed sketch that is just kind of creating a mess with lead everywhere and all over over your hand or if you're using like another type of more um, messier type of art supplies like pastel, colored pencil, anything that could get on the edge of your hand or that your hand is smudging this will come in handy as well. So definitely not only for digital artists, it's definitely useful for traditional artwork and yeah definitely something you might want to consider adding to your art supplies collection. Also in the realm of tools that I'm sure, again, everyone is sick of hearing me ramble on about it, swatch sheets. I cannot stress enough the usefulness of swatch sheets. I have swatched like everything. This one is my main watercolor palette that I added this plastic sheet to um, so that it actually has all of the colors listed. Um, but if I'm just interested in seeing the color swatches, you can obviously flip that behind. And yeah, that is my main custom watercolor palette. But like I mentioned, I have swatched literally everything. I have swatches for my different colored pencils. This one is my Prismacolor one. This one is my acrylic gouache paint colors that I own. Swatch sheets are insanely helpful. It helps you see exactly what the color is and also what colors you have available to you, especially in different paint tubes where you might have them stored in a drawer or something and you're not sure what colors you have. Having exactly the colors that you have on an easy sheet that you can grab and actually see instead of having to kind of dig through all of your paints and seeing what colors you have is incredibly helpful. Other than this way you actually get to see what the color is instead of kind of having to trust some random swatch on a tube of paint which is probably not incredibly accurate. Swatch sheets do not cost you money. It's a little bit of time but it's definitely worth it. This next thing has saved me so many times I can't even tell you. It is the Masters Brush Cleaner. Now I'm pretty sure this comes in liquid form as well, don't quote me on that though, um, but this one is in like a solid bar that you can scrape along your paint brushes. But I cannot tell you how many times this has saved me. I have had brushes that are absolutely like caked with wood glue that could like knock something out because of how stiff they are and this will revive them. It is insane. Like the brushes that you think have no hope for them and you're ready to toss, this will save. So this is definitely something you should consider having in your art supplies. It's also I'm sure not that expensive and you can use it for any type of brushes no matter what kind of painting um, or brushes you are using. So definitely consider checking out this brush cleaner. A little on the more unconventional side of things, but so, so helpful, is hand sanitizer. Now this is a tiny one that I have on my desk at all times, but hand sanitizer is one of those things that of course most people have and then most people don't consider using them in kind of the art supplies vein. But hand sanitizer will clean up almost any kind of mess. For some reason, I partic in particular have a really weird and bad habit of somehow ending up with acrylic ink spills all over the place. 
hand sanitizer will clean that up incredibly well. And of course, because it is just hand sanitizer, you don't have to worry about it like stripping your desk or like any kind of crazy chemical residue or anything like that. So definitely consider keeping some hand sanitizer around. It also, you know, you can clean up just about anything. If you have like a brush that has ink or paint or something all over it, like the handle, this will clean it off. I've used this on nibs before that are like crazy caked with acrylic ink and things like this stuff will clean up basically anything. So definitely keep some hand sanitizer around. Next up, transfer paper. Now this I'm sure would not necessarily be as useful to everyone and the next thing I'm going to mention you can kind of substitute with the transfer paper but I did want to put this in here specifically because it is basically the only product like it. Um, it is basically this one in particular is in a roll form. It is basically a charcoal um, I'm not actually even, is it? Yeah, it is um, graphite covered paper that you can use to transfer sketches onto things. So you might be someone that really likes um, sketching digitally and then transferring that sketch onto a canvas or a piece of paper or whatever. And instead of using a light box, because for me personally, because I'm using watercolor paper most of the time, trying to see through watercolor paper on a light box and get that sketch down is really not that practical. Um, so if you're someone that is using thicker paper and light boxes aren't working for you, definitely consider looking at and trying out some transfer paper. You basically put this down in between your sketch and what you're trying to transfer the sketch on and basically trace over your sketch and it transfers it onto the page. A really easy you know tool to use not that expensive this roll is probably going to last me forever because you can reuse the sheets multiple times until you know the graphite starts actually um, wearing off of them but yes crazy crazy helpful no matter what kind of art you're into I use this to transfer sketches onto wood panels canvases tons of stuff now the other thing that is kind of similar to that is tracing paper. Now for me personally, I love using tracing paper for intricate borders and designs. So I do a lot of Art Nouveau type artwork and for that, you know, some of the artworks have like um, a repeating border around the edge. So what I generally do is I kind of sketch out one segment of that border and then trace it onto tracing paper and then repeat that as you go along. Obviously you could use the transfer paper to kind of continue that pattern once you have the um, sketch or whatever transferred onto this, but I have like this whole method and I have a whole video on it too, which I will like card above of how to use uh, tracing paper similar to transfer paper because graphite comes off of tracing paper very well as well. So you can use this in the same way that you would use transfer paper to trace um, things and transfer things all of the time. But yes, I guarantee at some point you will wish you had tracing paper when working on a piece of artwork. So it is something I would highly recommend keeping in your art supplies. The last thing, which is technically a couple of item, is to help you once you have finished your artwork. And those are finishing sprays. These are the two that I use all of the time. They're fairly similar. Um, this one is the Fine Art Fixative and this one is UV Archival Spray. They are both from the Krylon Gallery series. They're my personal favorites. Um, there could be other companies that make these, so don't feel like you have to buy these specific ones. Um, but Fixative will help you more for if you have a super smudgy type of medium, if you've used pastel um, or colored pencil, anything that you're worried about smudging, this will help. I have used this um, when I have done pastel backgrounds to kind of set the background. It's workable fixative so you can work on top of it. So I have used this kind of midway through to set a pastel background and then continue drawing on top so it wasn't a pastel mess all over the place. And then this UV archival spray I use constantly to finish off artwork. Any commissions that I do that are traditional artwork like originals get sprayed with this. All of my originals that go out to other places get sprayed with this. Anything that is displayed um, outside of like a portfolio will get sprayed with this. 
it's great. It protects the artwork, it stops it from fading, um, it sets it similar to this, although if you were really worried about um, the medium smudging and whatever, you could use both. Um, but yes, both of these are great and I would highly recommend you look into finishing sprays to preserve your artwork. And those are my absolute must-have materials. If there are any ones that you personally find that you have to have in your studio at all times, please leave them in the comments because I would love to know what you find to be the absolute must-have items. But yes, that is everything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.